Okay. So uh, we're going to be doing a pineapple wreath tonight. And we're going to do something fun. So I have two signs. And at the end, when we get ready to put the sign on, I'm going to let y'all pick which sign. So both of these signs are in my shop. Uh, and I also have ribbon that's listed in my shop that matches these signs. So I have, we have this one or we have this one. So when we get towards the end, we'll pick which sign. <laughs> I thought that might be fun. A little something fun to do. A little different. Right? Oh, wow, that's fuzzy. Okay. So I went ahead and cut the mesh that we're going to use on top of the poof. So these are all cut at 20 inches. There is a yellow, it's yellow and white, yellow and cream, and then it's black and white. And then this is our ribbon. So we have the pineapple with the black and white stripes with a plain yellow. And then we have a black and white checkered with the other pineapple. Okay. We have a black frame. So how y'all doing tonight? I hope y'all are doing well. Everybody doing okay? Hello. Okay. So I got all of my ties up. So we're going to do poof first. And I want to, I don't really know how much I have in this roll. <laughs> so we're just going to make small poofs. Oh, wonderful. We're glad you're here. I like to start my poofs with zip ties. Y'all think I have enough zip ties here? <laughs> so we'll take like three out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the ones on the bottom up. And I'm going to show y'all a super easy way to measure out your poofs. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to gather it at the end. So I'm just gathering it together, okay? You want to make sure that those rough edges are underneath. Hello. Okay, we're gonna put it down on the frame and I'm gonna use a zip tie and I'm gonna tie it right before my first tie. So I'm actually not gonna use this tie. I'm gonna come back around to it. And then I'm also going to trim this off because it's a mess. So, y'all, this is extraordinarily thin, plain old deco mesh. Right? So, it's the thin stuff. And this is what I like to use. If I'm going to do something with the thin, I like to just use, if I'm going to do poops and I'm going to put something on top of it, I'm going to use the most basic mesh I can find because I don't want to spend a lot of money on what's on the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure from your first tie to over, just like this, and then you're going to come back and that is going to be the amount of poof that you put there, okay? So we'll keep doing that. You go from where you're going to where you just stopped to the next one over, and you do want to pull it pretty taut, okay, and that's going to be approximately... 10 inches. I was just measured to make sure. So remember, these ties are approximately 45 inches apart. So when you do it this way, you're going to get a consistent poof all the way around. Just like that. So we don't want a big one because we don't really know how much is in this roll. And this is just the base of what we're doing. Okay, there we go. 
So hopefully y'all are doing well tonight. It has been a busy day. Y'all, I haven't gone home yet. <laughs> I've been here since, well, since we got finished with homeschool. Long time. And some days are like that. Right? Okay, so just pull right across to that second one. You can also measure on your mat. You could use a ruler or you could use the perfect tail. So there's a 10 inch perfect tail. You can also do that. So lots of different ways that you can actually get your poofs to be consistent. Okay. When you're doing your poofs, you wanna make sure that you keep this really sharp edge tucked under. Because that's what kinda of makes your poofs look not so hot. So if you're having trouble with poofs, make sure you're tucking that under. Okay, just like that. So now we're, we're back around. We have two left. We're back to that one that I started at but didn't use. So see, you can see right here. See, there it is. So I'm still gonna go all the way across to that second row and then I'm gonna tie this here. So this is the first time I've used this tie. So my zip tie actually works as my first tie. I like to do it this way because it covers where I started and it gives a very clean look. So then, oh, here they are. <laughs> I'll take another zip tie and we'll go up top. Now it doesn't matter if you start on the top and go to the bottom or vice versa. It's really personal preference. Either way works. I just like to go, I used to start on the top and go to the bottom, but I found that I like going from the bottom to the top. <laughs> no rhyme or reason. So I do the same thing. I take this yellow mesh, I pull it straight up right before a tie. I'm gonna use another zip tie I just like to do this because then I don't have these weird little things sticking out. Alright. So same thing. Right across over to that second tie. And then go back to the one you're doing. And pull it out. Just like that. You could do the same thing with a 10 inch mesh. I just happened to have a yellow that was the right color in a 21 inch. But you can do this exact same thing that we're gonna be doing with a 10 inch, okay? It's not gonna take a whole roll. It'll take a little bit more than a half but if you wanted to conserve, you could always do your loops on the top a little bit smaller. I keep looking up thinking that I've got the <laughs> comments up here. And I don't, I need to put them up here. Okay. There we go. I like it with the, this, is, this is, would be cute for a B as well. You could do a bee wreath with this same little combination. Okay, there we go. There it is. Now I can see it. And then 
same thing so all the way across even when I get to that last one I'm still gonna pull it across so see we're almost done with getting this part done and when I put the next things on we're gonna go right on top of we're not gonna reopen these ties There we go. So that's the one that we tied when we started up here. So see now, now when I have it pulled out, you can't tell where we started or where we stopped. And that's why I like that, to do it that way. So I have a pretty decent amount left. So I'll cut it off. I just pull it around the back on the inside and I'll take that last zip tie and tie it down. Okay. And then I'll just trim off the excess. See, so now it's nice and neat. Okay. <laughs> Let me get things organized here. All right. Now. Now what I wanted to do, so I used um, half of each one of these mesh. So I'm only gonna use half. I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna alternate. I'm gonna do one yellow, I'm gonna do one black. And I'm gonna do the Woodland Ruffle, but since these are only 20 inches, I'm not even gonna get my little clip out. I'm just going to do like three ties, three rolls, and then there's just enough to get it together. See, there's just a barely enough ruffle. And I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna use my Bodabra today. I'm gonna put it down. Then we're gonna grab our ribbon combination. So I have the pineapple and the yellow. Actually, let's start Let's start with this one. So we'll do the black and get that contrast going. Okay. All right, so we'll pick up one whole piece and put it down together, tie it off. So you can go ahead and tie your three pieces and then just tuck it under. And I'll kind of pull my ruffles up a little bit and pull my ribbon down a little, like that. See, like that? Then we'll do a black one. Okay, so same thing. I curl it about three times on each side. And then I just scrunch them together. It's a little tiny bit of ruffle. And then I can take my ribbon Fold it in half, pinch in the middle, and just gather it in the center, and then pull it down like that. Okay, so we're gonna pull this whole thing out and go right to the next tie. Okay, so of course the yellow and black is gonna contrast more than the yellow and yellow. Okay. All righty. Okay, so we'll go back to the yellow. Let me rearrange my ribbons, there we go. All right, so I just pull it out. I go one, two, three. Flip it around and go one, two, three. The great thing is, is that the mesh already <laughs> wants to roll up. So it's not really very hard to get it to do that. Okay. Mom's good. She's just at home. Y'all, I, I got busy working and she was here earlier. 
so she was back there when I had my group call she was here okay so we'll stretch them out but she's doing well Alrighty. so we just keep doing the same thing so one two three I know it's hard to see when I'm doing that side one whoops one two three now if you do need to use the clip by all means use the clip and any bow maker will work just like this hey Charlie and Sophia but see how well these colors work together and I really wanted something that was super bright yellow because it'll contrast really well and it'll pick up this yellow in this ribbon I'm pulling the smaller one out front. Okay. I want to make sure I can see that. Mm -hmm. It's in the floor. Okay, let's put something heavy here so you can see. So I just go one, two, three. Then if you need to, you just grab your pin, your little holder, flip it around, and go one, two, three. Uh, you want to know what the next wreath kit's going to be? It is, do I have it over here? Oh, it's on my desk. Hold on. This one is February's kit. Can you see it? This is March's kit. So, if you were wondering what they are. And they do have similar colors, but it's different mesh and the ribbons are pretty different. these out just like that ready I love this ribbon it's so pretty it has a little sparkly stuff in it almost like a sparkly sheen. I like that. Okay. See, can you see that little sparkly sheen? It's pretty. I like it. So I'm making sure that the, the curls are up a little bit higher so that it kind of goes in between. You could also stack these together. So put two yellow together and two black, but you would end up using the whole roll, roll of both. in Florida now. She's down there where it's warm. It depends on what the sign is as far as can you met you just have to you just need to email me. Okay, there we go. 
So you do want to make sure you pull these kind of up a little bit so they don't get squashed down there in the bottom. You see what a nice contrast this is? Uh, the bicycle wreath is this month, so I should be doing it um, probably Sunday is when we'll do the bicycle wreath. January is just flying by like it is. Just crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. Do you love lemons? I love lemons too. And the ribbon is so cute. Do I have any more of that in here? When I get done, I'll go grab those ribbons to show you. They're so cute. I wasn't going to do yellow and black back to back, but I had to because of these ribbons I found. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, I have to do that. We would get snow. We just don't. We never get snow. It's very sad. The boys never get to see it. I mean, I don't want to live in snow, but snow sometimes would be nice. Okay, we've got the bottom done. Do you see how different it makes it look when you just add that little bit of color contrast on there? Okay, so now we're going to do the top. So we cut these at 20 inches, which means we used exactly one half of each one of these mesh. It's a pineapple wreath. But the colors are similar. Fold it in half and pinch right down the center. And make sure you put your hands under there and make that little birdie. Okay, so then we're going to go on top. It doesn't really matter where you start. So when I get on top, what I'll do is I will put the longer, so the wider ribbon is going to go in this direction. There's really a lot more room for it in that direction and it will cover if you have any little areas down here that need to a little attention. Oops. Okay. I was having trouble getting my hand on it. So the reason I do the ribbon like this, fold it like this, is you see how I get this little curl across my mesh? 
it does that because I already did that. It's easier to do it when it's in your hand up here than it is when it's on the wreath. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I don't have to work with it so much when it gets on the wreath. So see how it already has that curl. I'm just pulling it out. Okay. That's why. Because I, I want that nice little curl that comes across there. See how it kind of opens that ribbon up? I wish we could just get snow once. We haven't had snow here in years, literally years, since the boys were been like fourth and fifth grade. <laughs> And just just to let you know, they're like, one is in the last year of middle school, and the other one is in his first year of high school. So, it's been a while since we had snow. Much to my disappointment. I might only need it for like a day. But just a day. Just a day would be really nice. So you could also cut these in 10 inch curls, but honestly, this is a lot faster and you still get two curls. So you could do two 10 inch curls and get a similar look, but it's gonna take you a lot longer. <laughs> Be careful what I wish for. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. I'm in the South. <laughs> we don't really get snow. It's too hot. We get more like freezing rain or ice. There we go. I really would be okay with it if we got it. <laughs> I don't even need it to accumulate. I just want to see it. A place in order. You just go to hard working mom store.com that's my shop oh y'all I started a rewards program so if you shop with me make sure you sign up for it because you'll get discounts and stuff as you shop you also get extra points if you sign if you give us your birthday You'll get points on your birthday. <laughs> your vacation is staycation in the winter? Yeah, I get it. If it was snowing, I'd be staycationing too. Because <laughs> it's, it's really fun to look at, but it's not so much fun to drive in. <laughs> well, I grew up in Albany, Georgia, and we really, really never had snow. <laughs> so the, we moved to Greenville uh, right after I had Carson and it snowed there and I was so excited and then we moved to Lexington where we are now and it just doesn't really snow here so oh sad don't know how that random piece of mesh came flying out here Oh, my poor husband saying goodnight. I haven't been home, y'all. 
<laughs> I feel bad. Okay, there we go. Had to say goodnight to my hubby. Okay. I do, I do. I live pretty near the coast, so we can go to Charleston and we can go to Myrtle Beach, which is really great because the closest one to me when I was growing up was Panama City Beach. That's where we used to go. Now we go to Myrtle Beach. See how pretty that looks? Look at all that. See, and it's not overwhelmingly with the black and white. That's why I wanted to put the yellow in. So I don't want too much black. Oh, happy birthday! I don't like it to be too black because then it just kind of loses it becomes overwhelming, so I don't want it to look like that. And I tell you what's interesting is you can get very different looks by using the same color scheme. It's all in how you do it. Okay. So we'll pull out this last one. That's our last one. See, so we have lighter yellows in this one. So it is, we have this really bright yellow, and then we have a muted yellow, and then we have the black. So it kind of all blends together, and this ribbon really helps to tie it all in. Okay, now let's pick a sign, and then we'll do a bow. All right, so we have two different signs. Okay, sign number one. So it has the black and white edges on it. And it says, be a pineapple, stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet on the inside. Okay, and then we have the one that says, welcome. So you can tell me which one you like, and in the meantime, we'll get ready to make our bow. Okay. I'm going to build a snowman. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. Thank you. First one. Thank you, Angelic. This one or this one? Wait. Okay, so say black and white edge or yellow edge. Maybe then I can, then I'll know what you want, what y'all are thinking. The welcome one. Yeah, I like the the black lettering with it too. You like them, but I like them both too. They're both pineapple, so this one is in the shape of a pineapple, and this one just has pineapples all around it. The be a pineapple. The yellow. <laughs> Whew, I can't tell. I'll let Z and uh owl tell me what the census is all right now so this wreath has a lot of yellow so we're going to start off with our black because the yellow one okay bye Kristen so we'll start off with this one because it's going to give us the biggest contrast yellow edge okay I wish it was a kit it is not I wish I could make everything into a kit if I could just find the supplies. I'm telling y'all, it has been a challenge lately. All right, let's do 16 inch. Look at 
looks like the welcome is winning. Okay, so we're gonna go out to the six inch. All right. All right, and then six inch again. And I like to use the measurements that are right here on the <coughs> on the ribbon ruler. Well, it's really not a ribbon ruler. It's a bow maker tool. Okay. There we go. So six inch. I have two at six inch. All right, we can pull it out. Trim it off. Well, that was kind of long, but we can fix it. Okay. So then we're going to throw the yellow in the middle. Okay. All right, one at six inch. See, and where you can save when you're making wreaths like this is on these basic colors. So this ribbon and this ribbon is not expensive. So what you want to do is you want to use one or two decorative expensive ribbons and then the others not. <coughs> uh, the yellow lettered one says, be a pineapple, stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet on the inside. So you could call that one be a pineapple. All right, so now, this is a patterned ribbon, okay? So one side of this ribbon coming up is gonna look this way. One side is gonna look this way. So someone asked if I could show how to fix that. So what you do is you trim off your tail, you pinch it, put it in like this, okay? Then you're going to do, <coughs> whoops, sorry, this way. <laughs> then you're gonna do your second one. So you basically have to cut it off. You wanna go at least an inch over this way. Okay. So one tail has to be cut and put in place. The other one will be fine. So one will be correct and one will not. Then we can do, so I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here. Okay, maybe five inches. Just because I want this pineapple ribbon to really stand out. So these are in the center these pineapples, so you don't really have to worry about twisting this one too much. I always use wired ribbon. And I will tell you that unwired ribbon has a place for making embellishments and things like that. But when you're working on a wreath, you really and truly want a wired ribbon. All right, so now we're gonna trim this off and leave it about an inch. And that is how you get, you see how now they're both the same direction. I'm gonna put this in the middle. So we're gonna use this twice. Okay. So if I'm gonna use a ribbon multiple times, I'm gonna use the less expensive ribbon. All right, and then I will finish off with this one. So you'll see this time, I'm not gonna twist it. So if one will be coming up, one will be going down. And that is okay. It really is now, if it's something like 
trucks or bunnies or something like that, it's going to be really obvious. If it's, whoop, well, my lights went out. If it's going to be like this, it's not going to be as obvious. Okay. So I'm just going to take this zip tie and run it under the entire thing. I just want to get it started. I can pull it out. All right, and we can. Here we go. We'll just use this one. So I want to hold it on one side and slide it around to the back. So remember, we have a few pieces in here that basically are just anchored by that one little inch. So you don't want to do too much to pull it. All right, so just make sure everything's kind of in its place. It's good. All right, and then we're gonna pull it really tight. As tight as you can. Now, if you can't pull it tight, get one of those tools. You can use your pliers. Any of those things work. And then I keep that on there while I fluff it out. So let's make this a little bigger. Okay. So what I do is I take this and I twist and pull on it. You see how this is all stuck in here like that? Well see when I grab it and I twist and pull on it, it's no longer stuck in there. That's why I do that. Like that. Okay and then we you go from the bottom to the top. Right. It doesn't matter if you go back and forth or if you stick with one and then go to the other side. Anyway, okay, and then you just want to run your hands under your tails and that gets them curling. That's why we use the wired ribbon. Because wired ribbon is going to hold its shape. That's why we like it. I know the unwired is a little bit less expensive, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it to have the wired. All right, so now we have a little bow. See how cute that is? Okay. All right. So we got our wreath. Oh. <laughs> Um, this is going to be a video, so I did um, one like this and one with the yarn, and I'm just going to show y'all how to do it. It's just a cute little Valentine's project. It'll be out on Friday. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to tie it on. I'm going to tie it where the other one is. I kind of want it to not sink in. So I'm going to take a piece of my yellow mesh, I'm going to cut 10 or 15 inches, okay, and I'm going to ruffle it up. I want a mussy ruffle that's going to have lots of fluff in it. You see that? Because what that's going to do is that's going to keep this from caving in. Thank you. <laughs> Were you wondering the same thing? Sorry, y'all. I was recording it before I came live, so I forgot it was sitting there. Yeah. It's just, um, it's a heart that's been wrapped in ribbon. It's very easy to do. And then I have one that's wrapped in yarn. Okay, so we've got it in the back. So now when we come... Do you see the difference? How it does not, it does not squish down in the wreath. Now I'm pulling it down right now because I'm tying it. But once I get it tied, we will get it refluffed up. Okay, so I'm just tying it right to the frame. Okay. And then 
we just kind of take this ruffle and kind of pull it up just like this okay and then our bow will not be pushed down into the wreath it'll actually be sitting up on top so the next time you have trouble with your bow kind of sinking in, that's what you need to do. All right, so now with our tails, with the one and a half inch, I like to curl them. Thank you. And just pull it out. Okay. I like to have some that are kind of pulling across like this. You see how this, that's what I would think is like bringing the drama. All right, this one is way too long, so let's fix that. Okay, and then these we can curl up. Thank you. Even if you dovetail a ribbon, you can still curl it up. You just need to, you just need to fold it over. So, all right. All right, now, now we've got our bow on. See, and you can't tell that we just cut little pieces off to keep all of the tails going in the same direction. All right, now, I think we have picked this one, but I wanted you to see what they were both like. So this is one with the black and white edges, and this is the one with the yellow edges. This one kind of stands out a little bit more, but this one kind of blends a little better. So it's really kind of an either or. You need to hire a photographer. Okay. So I'm only going to do two holes in the round one. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just cutting my 26 gauge wire. All right. All right, so is this the one we decided on? I think it is. Oh yeah, you like the the one that says welcome. The other one you do have to kind of see it up close. Okay, so I'm just gonna punch it at the bottom and at the top. Okay. And I just run my wire through and I do like to double it up it just gives it a little bit more strength but aren't these awesome colors all right and then I'll go grab those ribbons I was telling you about I missed one. Let's curl. I love the little curl. That's my favorite. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to take this whole thing, go to the bottom, and I'm just going to tie it around the frame. That's all I'm going to do. See now in this one, our accent, our pop color is the green. Can you see that? So this green is picking up this green. see 
it's on there. It's not coming off. So there's the bow with all its tails. And there's the sign. All right, let me go grab those ribbons real quick. Come on, Beth. <laughs> I beat the girl. Alright, so you want to know what the next kits were? So the first one is the B. So this is the B sign. And y'all look at this ribbon. Oh my gosh. Don't you love that ribbon? I am obsessed with this ribbon. It is so cute and it's really nice. Kind of thick. Can you hear it? <laughs> I love this. So that's that one. And then I found this ribbon and I was like, crud. <laughs> well, now I have to do this. So this is the lemon ribbon. And then there's the lemon sign. See how it has that same little edge. And then I just like, I like things that say like lemon farm or natural or things like that. So those are the next two kits. Thank you. All right, y'all. Well, this was fun. I haven't quite finished this one, but see, this is the other heart that will be up. See, it has the yarn in it. And then I'll be putting them together. <laughs> so now y'all get a sneak peek of what we'll be doing. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, well, y'all have... Yeah, you want to see the B sign? Can you see it? See, and I made him with little blue eyes. Because I just thought he was cute. So, and I have a little honeycomb behind him. I thought he turned out really cute. Oh, I'm so glad. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, y'all have a wonderful night, and I am going to go home <laughs> and sit on my tail. Because <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, but it's been a good day. It's been a good day. I can't complain. All right. Well, y'all have... Life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Yes, I can. I will do that. I will sure do that. Y'all have a wonderful night, and um, I'll have this video of the hearts up on Friday. And, of course, it'll have a bow. Um, the video of the heart I will come out on Friday, so don't worry. It'll be there. It's um, I'm trying to do some recorded, some live, so that I can kind of get a good mixture of both. All right. Y'all have a great night, and I will see y'all on Friday. All right.